The Spirit has put in my heart to speak regarding a few matters of great importance. The world is experiencing uh, hemorrhaging, as the Lord said, would be at the end times. As I mentioned in the previous video regarding the birth pains, the sorrows, and uh, the uh, times of great tribulation, uh, the cycles that uh, are right now really at the at the end, they are at the end of the birth pains. That's where we are. And the creation is sealed right now and blooming. And the sealing that's happening means that the Bible says that everybody will go to their own quarter. So whatever you believe, whatever you have within yourself, deep within yourself, the seed that is there of God that's planted within, uh, your, the belief system, uh, is going to come to full bloom. And that's what the message is. The message is that God is saying to the people to come out of Babylon, to come out of the four corners of the earth, to come out of the ecumenical system spiritually with our hearts to God. And uh, I was speaking with uh, a sister recently, and uh, her church where she goes to is uh, one that I'm familiar with as well. And uh, the rabbi there, he is now allowing a person to preach there once a month to teach the congregation. And the last time that he, he did, what she mentioned, what she said, is that he said that he is not certain whether he believes it or not anymore. Uh, he doesn't know. Uh, he, he really thinks that he's not and he doesn't believe in Christ anymore, in Jesus. That's what he said in the congregation. So if I would have been there, right, I would have stood up. I would have stood up and I'd have broken that communication. Now that communication, obviously, is of the devil itself. And this rabbi is actually allowing this to happen. And the reason for it is that the Holy Spirit revealed to me, because I was prophesying in that congregation, the Holy Spirit brought me there for a time and chance, for a time and chance and occasion, for the people there, and uh, he, I knew people, I know people that go there, I knew people that, that went there, and uh, he actually came to me. He didn't like me. He didn't like me preaching um, after the, uh, the congregation uh, was uh, dismissed, and then they would, we would go uh, and have food in the in the, the food area. And uh, he was, he inquired of me regarding what was the word of the Lord. And the only reason, and I told him the prophecy uh, of what's happening, what was happening with the water levels, and that God has me watching over the water levels. Uh, and there was a flood that came. It was uh, approximately eight months after I told him regarding that. But he, he only asked me only to dismiss me and uh, to make me look bad before everybody else and basically he just didn't want me there because I was prophesying and so I ended up you know I did my my, my job was there but done I did what I was supposed to do and he refused and he forsook the, the messages from the Holy Spirit uh, the teaching that he needed to do because what he what he, he's doing is a messianic congregation and so what they do is they uh, take the Torah the scrolls. He's got a, a Torah scroll, and uh, it's a really big one. And what he does, he parades it around the congregation, and everybody goes and touches it. And so he's bringing the people back into the Law of Moses. And when you go back into the Law of Moses, the self righteousness of humanity of the covenant, uh, you're going, you're walking into death because where the Torah is, there is sin, there is death. That's why they had to practice the Torah. The Torah was there for those who were who were sinful. That's what the law was implemented for. It's not the ordinances to do when you don't have any sin. Uh, killing all the animals and sacrificing them and all of that. Um, so what has happened over the years is that uh, he's basically gone back, gone into, he's, he's been taken it's a little bit and a little bit by the, by the demonic spirits of the self-righteousness of uh, productivity you know, of humanity, which invokes demons, 
And he, uh, basically the Holy Spirit revealed to me that he's gone into the spirit uh, of the Kabbalah, the spirits of the Kabbalah. And so this is why he's actually got this, this, this devil now. Uh, he's given him place once a month. He must be a, a benefactor. She was speaking about that. Uh, that uh, and we know that the ones that give the greatest uh, tithings uh, are benefactors. And so they serve their benefactors. And so now they actually have him teaching in front of the congregation. So I spoke to her regarding my book. I spoke to her regarding, uh, she is reading my book. And uh, she just can't, she can't uh, not read it. She said, I just can't put it down. Uh, that's the response, by the way, that I'm getting uh, from everybody who's reading it that I know of. And even there was one person that he was a, a Yeshua only person and I was gently brought towards his, to his attention that what he's doing is wrong and he got upset at me and he won't he doesn't want to talk to me anymore. So uh, I actually hand delivered a copy for him and uh, he's reading it and he says that he's reading it. So well, I told this girl, this, this sister, in Christ, that uh, this woman, uh, sister in Christ, that she used to take the communion and that she's not to go there anymore and to do that with, with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what she's doing. So she's understanding uh, the situation. And that's what God requires from all of his followers, to have that uh, wisdom of what is happening to escape these days, because these days, what's happening is that the scripture says that uh, the uh, the entire creation will rise up like a flood. It'll wholly rise up as a flood. And this uprising, that uprising that's happening, which is not the flooding of the word of God, uh, the flooding of, of the word of the works of the devil, the privatized, privatized military, uh, that uh, the uh, uh, the establishment is raising up the children of, of Satan to only increase worse and worse. As the Holy Spirit revealed to me that they're all going to rise up as a flood and uh, it's going to be like a volcano will respond according to the uprisings. And these uprisings are rising exponentially through, they were always with us and they're, they're rising up through stages of developments once again. The conditioning is getting worse and worse and worse uh, and and they are using the narratives of LGBTQ and uh, the dead body dragon kings, the dead body dragon queens, the gender benders. They're using uh, the principality of sexual immorality and all the other principalities, technology and science. Like for example, they, they disallowed me uh, to uh, do certain things, to get certain accounts. Uh, it's Asia administration that is really taking over uh, the technology aspects of communication. And it's all about the social credit scoring system. And it's all also, so that's the environment part aspect of controlling the humanity. And then we have the ecumenical aspect, the business part of it, which is the digitalized currency which is the casting the dead. This, all this, the, the technologies, the false science, they're rewriting the Bible. Uh, all of these different things that they're doing is a complete war against humanity. And it's to control. It's a social credit scoring system. And it's, Canada is really welcome. It, and it's completely uh, being in the Western Hemisphere, America as well, and it's, it's, it's regulating the lives of humanity and uh, people are being swept away by it. Uh, social media advertising, uh, not the advertising, but well, the advertising, the selfies of oneself, uh, oneself and the uh, social media, uh, once again, Facebook, Twitter and all of those uh, places, uh, those realms that are created. It's all policy, procedure and protocol. And what it does, once again, it raises up private militaries. And so we have the private military rising up of the, uh, let's say, the LGBTQ and um, 
what they're doing is uh, they're if they don't if they feel uncomfortable of what someone is doing, then all they got to do is call the police. The police is going to put the actually even arrest these people to make them feel uncomfortable for just whether it's preaching the love of God or anything else. But that is what the target is. The target group is the the, uh, the ministers of Christ. It's a cancel culture, and so. Uh, the private military as well is uh, also for the out those that like to go on trail walks, those who like to go camping, and if they see something that they don't like, uh, then they call the police. If someone is doing something, if they don't like somebody, they don't they got into an argument, or um, uh, you know they see someone living out out there someone who's going against the policies, procedures, and protocols of the agreement, they'll just call it in, right? Well, this person is not walking, he's not, this person is not staying on the trail, he's leaving a, he or she is leaving a carbon footprint, and uh, they set up a tar, they have, they're being trained to police, right, to be used as police. And uh, when I was uh, in uh, British Columbia also always been be the trails. They show you how to walk the trails. They show you what to do. Uh, and, and if you see anything suspicious, call it in. And so they're they're being trained through a vision of prosperity. And this digitalized currency is exactly that. The Holy Spirit revealed to me that the end time is going to be prosperous. They're going to be prospering. They're going to promise them. Liberty. They're going to promise the world uh, wealth, and what they're doing is they're doing exactly that. Elon Musk is saying that you don't have to work, and you'll just receive this all this wealth. And a lot of them did make a lot of money, possibly they're still making a lot of money on the internet and not having to work. And so they're they're militarizing, they're monitor, monitorizing. Uh, all peoples, people like Barabbas, and they're letting them go with with wealth. They don't have to work, and so what they can do is they spend more time, you know, uh, terrorizing. They can spend more time, like Antifa, uh, all these different groups, these splinter groups, to completely destroy, degenerate society, to have people live in fear. So they're creating a new world order with the promise of prosperity. And so they've given them power. The LGBTQ, the Dead Body Dragon Kings and Queens, uh, all of these um, recently in San Francisco, I think it was San Francisco, somewhere, a, a group of bikers that closed off the road. And it was that same weekend where we had bikers downtown and they closed off the road and uh, they were at the, uh, the uh, Olympic Plaza, it's called across the street from City Hall in Calgary. And it was all fenced, and they had their motorbikes there, and they had a motorbike uh, permit uh, festival type of thing. Oh, actually, it was a, uh, it was like a, uh, they were riding their, their motorbikes uh, in the Olympic Plaza area. They set up, uh, it was kind of like a monster truck type of stage, where they set up like a, a rally way where they would ride their bikes over uh, certain obstacles. Uh, I never, I was outside uh, of there because I'll show you that photo that I, I took it says that if you enter into these premises, uh, we can use your photos. We'll take photos of you, and videos or whatever. We can use that uh, photo or that video of you for our own use. And you have no, no, no right over the photos. And so it's, um, once again, it is a complete control of humanity. And so you see that that's another principality that they're raising up. And so there's many different principalities. And the control mechanism set in place is governed by the establishment. It's governed by the elite. And so and uh, they, they've surrendered it. Uh, to them in order to have their fun, to have their freedom. And once again, in the culture, it's an attack against the church. It's an attack against those who want to live a godly life. 
as the scriptures say, that those who want to live a godly life, they will be persecuted. And uh, Jerusalem, which is a glorification. And the elect would be deceived, even if that were possible, because the church is not, is in a false vision. I was at a place, I was at a, uh, yesterday at Olympic Plaza, it was, uh, what's his name, Sean, uh, Sean Fruit, something. He's the guy from America, and uh, he, I guess he sits on graves and prays for them, prays for the dead. And that's, obvious, that's obviously an abomination to God. I didn't even know who that was, but I heard his name mentioned, and I didn't know what his background was, but I was told that's his background. And there was Christians there with their hands raised up. It was like a, like a, a revival type of uh, event where they're uh, worshiping God, hands up in the air, lots of music, no doctrine, lots of music, and just pep talking. You know, some pep talking, and that's it from him. And so I could, you could tell that he's he's, he's a very uh, he's just he, he's not very schooled. He doesn't understand doctrine. He shouldn't be there in that assembly, leading the people. And there was some, you know, I was surprised that uh, there was uh, some people there who were actually having their arms raised and, and going on with this, with this agenda that was going on. Now it's it's good to worship, and and a lot of the people there maybe they didn't know who he is. They just want to go and uh, they want to uh, worship God outside, and they're worshiping and they love God in their hearts. They really do. And they're really worshiping God themselves. You know, it's not everybody that is uh, attached with Him uh, as as a as a, a teacher, uh, a false teacher, which He is. Uh, but there is, uh, but they're there, unknowing that what is happening, what the agenda is. And obviously, He's doing these stunts of sitting on graves and praying in order to increase His stature to get a reputation in order to do something, use a spark, and to get in there, just like Todd Bentley and, uh, and all the others that, that do these stunts uh, in order to get fame. And uh, Christians, unfortunately, they're eating it up. Variety. They might not even know what he's doing, but all they know is he's a very popular person. He's been made popular. How has he been made so popular? Well, once again, they're sold out. They're sold out to the system. They've sold their souls uh, in order to gain this prosperity. And so it's very prevalent in the church. And uh, there was a, a minister there who uh, I've, I, I met also at the uh, Stampede Parade. I was preaching there. And uh, he, uh, he was circulating um, you know, his, his, his belief system. And he was out there doing things. Uh, and uh, I don't disagree with everything that he was doing. Uh, he's, he's right in, in the fact that uh, they, they need to repent and come out of it. Uh, they, they have to know more. You know, Christianity needs to be more educated in what is happening. Christianity has to understand the completeness of what is happening right now. Because... Uh, we people, God wants us to be come to full fruition because everything is blooming right now and it must be in Christ. So somehow, and, and knowing the truth of, of true worship and not you know giving these people place in the congregation is, is what God is requiring. God says have nothing to do with the powers of darkness, but rather expose them. And it, it is a spirit like a, con, you know, we have the Kundalini spirit as well, uh, you know, in the, um, in Christianity. And we do have uh, Christians that are being manipulated by demons. And that is 100% true and accurate. And there's, there, there's absolutely no way that anybody should not know that. Uh, however, this one minister, he was saying the same, he was, that's what he was saying, and that's what he was saying um, to me a few times, that Christian Christians cannot be um, possessed by devils. Well, that's not true. 
And so there's, there's a lot of false teachings. And this type of um, teaching, like the pre-tribulation rapture, and that disaster is not going to come upon us. We're going to be whisked away. Well, we're seeing the disasters in Christianity right now. We're seeing the deception that's in Christianity. We're, we're, we're seeing the, the, the dullness, the lukewarmness that's in the church, not comprehending, not understanding what is happening before them. And that is not going to enter into the kingdom of God. God right now is looking for his government people. God is looking for those who are outside, who are realizing, like that sister in Christ, who said, when that person said that, that was it. She's not going anymore. And I told her, take a meeting at home. God's going to manifest himself to you. That's what you're going to understand what's happening even more. And she said that she's going to do that. And she's going to just stay at home. She's not going there anymore. And that's what Christianity needs to do. Christianity needs to fast away from the ecumenical church system of Egypt, no matter what that church is, and take some alone time with God. That is to discipline our bodies, our physical and spiritual body, and to show God that we're searching for Him. And the reward that God will give us is that he will manifest himself to us. The instruction is found in my book. This book will give you the instructions of what is happening. This book will give you the instructions of how to conquer it. This book will give you the truth. This book will raise you up and strengthen you in these times. This is the book that men have rejected. This is the book that is going to get you where you need to be. It's very inexpensive. If you were to look at it, uh, search for it in Barnes & Noble. This is the six and a half by nine, six by nine, size black and white version of the book. It's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing, beautiful book. And the information here will set you free. It shows you how to be saved. It shows you what the problem is. It shows you how to conquer. It shows you how to take communion. This book shows you everything you need to know. And it's a book to be studied and a book to uh, be uh, invoking the Lord Jesus Christ while you're reading it. This is the book. This is what you need. And, I, and I'm telling you, I'm assuring you, that when you read this book and you seek the Holy Spirit and you invoke Him in your life, this is the meat. This is the solid food that the church needs. Okay, It is, it is uh, readily available I saw it for as low as $5.99 in uh, Barnes and Nobles, I believe it was. And uh, there's uh, in the, th the thrift, thrift books, thrifty thrift books uh, there as well. Uh, they have some copies. And uh, uh, there's I, I didn't really do a lot of searching, but it's there. They go to the website. The website is called curatedforvision.com. The website, my website is called createdforvision.com. It's right on the front of the black and white book here. And read the write-up. Here's the write-up that's on the website. Go to the media page and uh, check out the slideshow. It's not a video. It's a slideshow. It's just photos. That's circulating right now on Facebook and Amazon. And... Um, Check out the, the blog page because I did, I do have a, I got some of the numbers, and very, very minor, because I'm honest, I am not going to compromise, this needs to be 100% accurate, I went through this book, and I don't know how these happen, these, these numbers, because I did go through it all, it's possible that it was through the publications, but the process, uh, but it's all here, there's some clarifications and some corrections. But and you when you go over these you'll see that they're very minor and they're not all they're not the only corrections is the the uh, ages and generations for example rather it's not the the fourth age and third generation it's the fifth age and fourth generation type of thing but the book even without this the book is more than worthy 
even without this because the book actually clarifies it itself because there's many more places where you see that the numbers are correct. They line up the way they're supposed to. So I've had a, some problems with numbers all my life. And so I really went over the whole thing meticulously. Um, and uh, so that's very minor. And so you can download the correction. One, one is uh, full size for the black and white, or uh, the six foot, for the six by nine, custom design. So you, once you download it, you can print it out and you can cut it and it fits right inside the book. Same thing with the eight and a half by 11 the color book, which is an amazing, amazing read. Uh, it sits flat open, you can put a Bible over it and you can go over the scriptures and take communion. This is the true doctrine of what the Bible says. This proves that the Bible is true. This book uh, couples the uh, scriptures with world events. And all the scripture, scriptures are here to back it up. It shows you, this book shows you the true Jubilee year and the cycles of Leviticus 25, 20, 22. This book shows you the truth. This is your food. And this is with the Bible. Okay, this is part, this is a study book. And you, and you use the Bible to go over this. And you'll be amazed what is in here. You'll be amazed what the Bible actually says. And Jesus Christ said that you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. That's what it's about. Freedom. Where there is Christ, there is liberty. This is freedom. I, I'm telling you the truth. This is the book. I've gone over it myself. The Holy Spirit, he empowered me to get it. He brought it all together. He's faithful and he's true. This is of Christ. This book was written through the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. I suggest you get a copy. It's not about a personal uh, relationship with me. This is regarding a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I commend you all into the hands of Almighty God the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ, which is our fellowship. This is what's going to get us saved. There is no civilian uprising. We are not living in the times of 1812 in Canada or 1776 in the United States. We're not living in those times. There is no continuum. There is no pre-tribulation rapture. Have you... Uh, I have bookmarks. Have you researched the present persecutions that's happening in the world with the Christians? They're not being raptured. We're at the ends of the earth. We're in a time where all the food chain is being completely poisoned. Look at and research all of these things on the internet. That's what the internet is there for, is to receive this information. And it's true. The Holy Spirit showed me that they're poisoning the food supply. This was years and years and years ago. The water, they're, they're going to poison the water in such a way that it's going to activate. They're, they're, they, and that's how the dead bodies are going to be killed. That's one of the ways that they're going to kill humanity. Okay? They're depopulating. They are uh, destroying the vitality of the body. They're making the body tired. Okay, they're making the body uh, weak, and they're removing, they're reducing the life expectancy. They're re reducing the every the, the 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 vitality of the body. And what they're doing is, uh, I just read this news report, also this news article that's saying that because of the increase in the amount, the cost of groceries, they're going to take out some of the good ingredients, some of the ingredients that, and replace them with less expensive ingredients. What does that tell you? They're actually going to increase the poison. There's rat poisoning in it. I remember buying some cola. This was quite a while ago, five years ago. It was on sale and I wanted to try it. It was a health cola. It was with cane sugar and it was a great, uh, it's supposed to be a health, healthy drink. It was on sale. And so how do they get you to buy stuff? They put it on sale. Well, I drank one. They were small cans, maybe 250 mils. And after I drank it, all I could taste in my mouth was medicine. Now, the Bible says that no weapon formed against you will prosper. Every tongue, and that is the poisons, 
and every tongue that rises up against you, you will condemn. Uh, and this is the righteousness of the saints that live in the light of Jesus Christ. Our righteousness is the heritage of the saints that live in the light of Jesus Christ. The light of Jesus Christ live in there. And uh, our righteousness of him is, is, is of him. Their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. And that's the only way that we're going to escape. That's the only way we're going to remain alive. The Bible says that in those days, even the elect uh, would be deceived. And if those days were not shortened, all flesh, all flesh, no flesh would survive it. And so God is going to come back in that time, which I believe is going to be nuclear war. For those who are remaining and who are alive, and in those times of nuclear war, uh, it's going to be, uh, once again, uh, only Jesus says that nighttime is coming when no man can work, which which means that without the Holy Spirit in us, we are not going to make it. Okay, we're not going to make it through to see the to see the Lord um, return. Now, I spoke about this before, and uh, God multiplies numbers. He adds. He can add zeros to numbers, right? Like the water in the in the sea of uh, in the sea, in the Temple of Solomon, when he first created, when he first uh, built that that water basin with the twelve oxen representing the twelve tribes of Israel, had a certain amount of baths in it. That's how they used to measure the volume of the water. As his kingdom grew, and after he was established, he became more wealthy. While the water level that now there's more baths in it in Chronicles, there was more water. You see, and so there was a multiplication there as well and so we know that uh you know one day is ten days it is a hundred days it's a thousand days it's ten thousand days we know that same with years that's how the bible is written and we know that they have numerical values numbers do and god uses numbers to communicate he also magnifies and multiplies those numbers and so that's amazing news uh however God is not going to compromise his position. We, once again, are giving a resume. We're living a life where we must be worthy to, to work alongside the 144,000 and Jesus Christ himself in heaven. If not, we're not going to be there. And we're, we're not to be deceived. So God is going to keep people prospering until the very end. Uh, however, uh, there has to be an awakening that's, that happens. There has to be a way. We need to be prepared. It's extremely important. Uh, everybody believes that, uh, you know, the way the doctrine, the way uh, teachers present uh, the doctrine, they never include, practically ever include the five foolish virgins. They do not teach the complete doctrine, which says that the five foolish virgins will not reign with God in heaven. They're going to separate, be separated. Uh, for, they won't be in the marriage supper of the Lamb. They will be separated. Uh, from the greatest to the least, it will be a transcendency through fire in order to purge all the sins that are stopping the people from entering into the gates of heaven. Uh, Isaiah says, Open you the gates for the righteous nation that keeps the commandments of, law, of, of the law of God, the commands of God that they may enter therein. And so when the righteous speak those words, those gates open. Uh, but... If we are not enchanting and invoking God in our lives now, and, we, and we're in the world, and we're, you know, deceived, you know, the scripture says in Peter chapter 1, verse 4, 16 and 19, that judgment begins with the household of God. And so if the judgment begins with, and it's already happening, the judgment of God is beginning, I can see, I know exactly how it's manifesting, why it's manifesting in the culture, cancel culture. And this is what I'm explaining right now. And that, the judgment begins with the household of God. So if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will happen to the unrighteous, to the sinner, to the ungodly, right? to those who are not prepared? And that includes the five foolish virgins, which is a numerical value of physical kingdom dominion over the senses, the five senses of the flesh. We have to destroy the stronghold of our flesh. We believe with our hearts and confess with our tongue. And and we take communion with God, in solitude with God, in our daily life, and we exercise our bodies, and we defeat the stronghold of the flesh in our lives. And, and we, uh, 
we continue in the instruction so that the, the, uh, the anointing that is within us, which is uh, the grace of God, comes to the forefront. If God's going to squeeze people out of death, uh, of being separated away from God, all in various degrees, through great tribulation. That's how he does it. And so we need to be prepared and understand what is happening. Because when, when that begins, and it's beginning now, I mean, we're, we're in that cycle of great tribulation, one, one of the seven-year cycles. This is the, the original and the very, very uh, profound seven-year cycle that is, I, I have three different seven-year cycles written in my book. The most profound one that I find, they're all, they're all very important is the one when he spoke to me and said the seven years have begun. And according to that seven year cycle, 2023 is last year. It is this mingled with the fourth dimension, whether of Jesus Christ or whether of Lucifer saying the devil, and there are mixtures. And the Holy Spirit revealed to me that 2020 is of great, great uh, separation, uh, more than it's just in as in the soul. We look at the four horses uh, because it represents the four horses. And so the last, so 2021, 2022, 2023 was the flesh, soul, and spirit, the three horses. The fourth year, which is in the center of the lampstand, is the fourth dimension. It's the fourth horse. And so my, my book explains all of this, how this works in the last two chapters. And... Um, the third and fourth dimension are married with the clay. And the spirit is what goes up to God. So the first horse is the flesh. The second horse is the soul. And that's the body of humanity, the two bodies. The spirit expresses the condition of the, of, of the body. The, the flesh and soul are one. And that expresses to God. The way we speak the way we believe, what comes out of our mouths is a condition of our very being. This book shows you, my book shows you how to have a perfect spirit. How to conquer it all. And, and, and Jesus said, once again, you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. That's freedom. That's true freedom. And it's not picking up physical arms. It is not fighting in a civil war. So if anybody wants to go and fight in a civil war, not I am not taking part, not even close. I am not going to shed the blood of anybody to want to stay in this world when God is calling me out of this world. That's the situation. God is not calling me to pick up arms. And he never, he never did. Because I, I have the power to pray and to invoke God. And that he would he will protect me. Where I don't have to use those, those things. If I was to have a family, he would watch over my household. And uh, that's been manifested and proven in my personal life. With others, so uh, this is a sign of the times. Volcano represents the um, it represents the spirit of humanity. Uh, that's what the volcano represents: the pestilence that's coming out of humanity. The earth cannot bear it up. Right, the earth is responding now. And God says in Genesis that He will destroy the earth with the earth. When God speaks about earth. He's speaking of the physical body and the house of humanity. Because the flesh is part of the house of humanity. And he's going to destroy the physical body with the, with the earth, with the curses that are on the earth, because men are reaping the curses. And God says, once again, that the earth is cursed and that the physical flesh in the Bible is also referred to as the earth and the physical flesh wants to chase the produce of the earth, both the curses and the blessings. God says 
to stay away from the blessings. Touch not the unclean thing, and then I myself will receive you. Come out of Babylon, my people, and uh, for, for, uh, unless you share their sins and his sins and partake in their plagues, it's going to fall on all humanity. Wherever those plagues fall, whoever is deserving, whoever is, wherever there's sin, they're going to be afflicted. And part of the affliction is, is not believing. They have two horns like a lamb, but they speak like a dragon. And they worship the beast without knowing it. And they're believing that there's going to be a turnover. Christianity believes in physical kingdom dominion. They believe that, look, we, we escaped this judgment. We're making progress. Right? And so the devil is, is polarizing the people. It's just a polarization. It, it's just to get them to go further and deeper and deeper into this um, fighting to get the government back, to take control of society again. I've been saying this for so many years that Jake, it was prophesied that Jacob, the physical body of the covenant, will lose his inheritance. Uh, Jeremiah 17.4 or 4.17. And that's what's happened. Esau is ruling. And the Bible is prophesying very clearly that war is decreed to the end and that Esau, Lucifer, saying the devil, the king of Assyria, will not repent. They have to drink it to the dregs. They'd rather pull that nuclear code than to go to their judgment. That's why this war in Ukraine, okay, it's a security blanket. Like, it's, 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 it's uh, if, if needs be. And right now, America, the troops are moving into Ukraine. And they're getting those F-16 fighter jets, and they're what they're saying now. Uh, what is what is happening uh, is that the developments, because you can't always trust the media, uh, but you can see that it's progressing into a greater war. China just drew out ten uh, lines, okay, ten 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 bands, ten. Uh, they used to have nine. What they did is they came out with the standard map. Now you can see this in Wyon, the news channel, where uh, India is now opposing them. And the one line, they have 10 lines now, which is a map, the standard map for 2023, which uh, tells the region what China's territory is. And they're claiming the, the entire area, the sea, the Asian sea, practically their own. And the one line that they added, the tenth line, which is a number of passing through the judgment, is closest to Taiwan. And so they're basically saying, and they're saying, look, don't look too much, too deep into this. This is just kind of like a, uh, like a, uh, an exercise or whatever they're saying. But they're all stirring all those islanders. They're all the islands there. And Australia and um, uh, India Taiwan, they're all being threatened, and they all feel threatened from China because they claim those waters for themselves. Those are international fishing waters where they get their sustenance. And uh, China is, is out of the closet. Now, Donald Trump, he had absolutely no control over China coming out. And so when he says that he can stop the war and he can do all these things, He's, he's not telling you the truth because China came out while Donald Trump was in power. They came out of the closet in 2019.5. It was in October where they had the military parade celebrating, I think it was their 70th year as a republic. Or, uh, and then they had a 100 year as a communist uh, party uh, in 2021. They came out and they said that if anybody gets in their way, that they'll have their heads bashed in, speaking to anybody, including America. While Donald Trump was in administration. Now, did they know that Donald Trump would lose the election? That's a question mark. They have intelligence everywhere. They have the intelligence. It's Asia administration running my website for my, uh, for my book. 
created for vision.com. They're operating it. It's Asia administration. My back end says Asia administration. And so it's a social credit scoring system and they're basically doing whatever they want, right? As far as what my social credit scoring is. And, uh, they are coming up against all these nations, even India, which is part of the BRICS. And so they're flexing their muscles. They're not bluffing. They're not playing. They're ready to go to nuclear war. They said that it's going to be if they if they if they come up against the what the movement what China is doing. <clears throat> excuse me. They <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, the spokesperson said that it'll be Armageddon, Armageddon, Armageddon. I showed you these videos, those videos. They're not bluffing. Russia is not bluffing. It's not, if this is a world catastrophe that's happening. And they're creating these food shortages also. Bill Gates bought up how much of the land, farmland in America, to either poison it and distribute it or to withhold the grain, one or the other. They're causing a famine, and they're putting poison in the, in the food. And the Holy Spirit showed me that the lineups for food are going to be that poor quality. And the reason for the poor quality food is the poor quality doctrine. Pestilence in the sight of God is spiritual also. And it is false believing, false spirit. Uh, communications. God does not receive that. And, and God is doing it. He's moving it. He's moving this to do it. He put it in their minds to do it by separating himself from them. Allowing this to happen. Because he's closing the age. There is no exodus back into this world. The next exodus is going to be in heaven. So this is a message that is there is an emergency. It's like reading one of those emergency uh, communications on, on, on the iPhone, weather. Well, the weather right now, the, the condition, the spiritual condition of the judgment of God, of the encroachment of Lucifer, Satan, devil, of the uh, uh, ends of the earth conditions of great tribulation is now, that's the emergency message. The condition of humanity, and we have to snap out of it. we got to get woke in Christ. And I spoke to some Christians, and I'll say it intentionally. And they'll say, well, well woke is only for the world. Woke, I don't like that word, woke. Well, and I, I'll say, well, you know, I was kind of wondering myself. And so what I did is I looked at the definition of woke. What does woke mean? Well, what woke means, it means to be awakened. A great awakening. And Paul says it's time that you wake up from your slumber. Wake up, for not all have the knowledge of God. Jesus Christ said, couldn't you have stayed with me awake for one hour to keep watch with me? He said, indeed, the uh, spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And that's the weakening that they're doing of the flesh to stop us from finishing strong with God. We need to have preeminence with our soul, but the flesh wants to stop it because the flesh is fragmented. The flesh does not do what God wants. It wants to pursue the curses of the earth. God says to destroy that in your life with the power of the Holy Spirit, the resurrection of Christ. We can do it, but it takes discipline. It takes a lot of discipline for us to do that. So I hope you're uh, inspired uh, behind me. Uh, that's my... Uh, it's my coffee cup behind me. It's uh, one of those manual coffee makers. So uh, that's what that is. Uh, I just noticed that. And um, I got work to do on the camper. I got lots of work I got to do, but the ministry is, is taking over. The, the publishing of the book has been uh, every day trying to get the uh, advertising materials right. They're wonderful. They're amazing. They're all in 3D now. And, uh, or not 3D, but rather, rather a wide angle, and the advertising looks great. Uh, it has to be as perfect as possible. This is a one-time thing. 
Um, I don't have time. There's no time. I'm going to write another book and go through the process again. Uh, I'm, I'm ministering, but it, it is part of my study. The Holy Spirit leads me to do it. I'll do it. This is a parent book. And it's really a parent book in that it covers all of these doctrines, and it's all 100% accurate. I've been reading it, and I'm my greatest critic. Nobody is a great, more greater critic of myself than I am, and uh, than myself. And like I said before, God really came through for me, and I needed him because it has to be through him. This information is not through me. The information of this book is through the Holy Spirit. And so once again, take communion with God. And this will help you when you're reading your, the scriptures. It tells you how to read the scriptures, what the scriptures are saying, how the scriptures apply to our lives. And once again, the greatest witness is the Holy Spirit in us, all the doctrine, and also uh, the uh, world events coupled with the scriptures. Incredible. And if you're a Mormon, follower, I'd say get this because this proves that the Book of Mormon is false in a, in a loving way. you got to get it and you got to read it and seek God. We have to be ready to come out of the world no matter what. And so we ask God, Father God, I don't want to be lied to. I want the truth. Whatever the truth is, wherever the truth leads to, that's what I want. I, it's not about my religion. It's not about what I believe. Life is all regarding what you believe, not what I believe. And I need you to show me the truth. Father God, I want the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. I'm willing to do whatever you want in order to receive that truth. We've got to get real with God. That's what I asked God when I first became in the ministry. I said, God, I want truth. I'll do anything you want. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. But I want the truth. That's what I want. 100% truth. And I've been searching for that for uh, over 17 and a half years. And I found it. It's right here for the people to make public. And it's right here in my heart and in my conscience. It's with The truth is with me. I know the truth. And I want everybody else to know the truth. It's a matter of life and death. And it's uh, what we're to do. He says in his word that with many he was not well pleased because they were overthrown in the wilderness. The truth gives you victory. The truth empowers you to not only destroy the works of the devil, but to hunt it down. And, and people, they cringe at that. You know, so many people are so distraught. I was talking to a person and he says, well, he's afraid to ask for wisdom. Because of what it says in Ecclesiastes, you know, much study is weariness. You know, wisdom to a soul is, brings weariness. Yes, but it was a different covenant. The Bible says in the Proverbs, in the first covenant, and King David, they searched for wisdom. Proverbs 8, Proverbs 1, get wisdom, get it, uh, get the real wisdom, but not empowered through your own self-righteousness, empowered through the Holy Spirit. That's been the message for 17 and a half years. And it's never changed and never will change. God is the victory, not us. God in us is the victory. So uh, I pray you're inspired and I pray that uh, this is going to, to help you walk in these times of great tribulation. We're in the cycle of great tribulation. All the cycles are gonna be great tribulation from now on. We're in great tribulation. Great tribulation compounds, it's compacted. And it gets more intense as the cycles continue on. And if you read my book, you'll understand that the cycles are every 0.5 years at minimum. Um, because the cycles can start at the feasts as well regarding the seven years. So the timing of the return of God is impossible to know. It's impossible. Nobody can know. But the Bible says that we should know when it's near even at the door. We should know. This book will enable you to inquire. The last remaining, uh, just under a minute, segment, uh, which is now a segment of this video, uh, somehow the, the audio got cut off. So uh, I'd like to just finish off here just by saying, uh, 
just to conclude what I was saying, and a new revelation also that God wanted me to speak regarding, is that um, the church is really taking matters lightly as the world regarding uh, God, regarding the instructions that the Lord Jesus Christ gave us to do. Uh, taking lightly, because it, as Scripture is saying, Daniel, that the church is being worn out. The devil is wearing out the saints. And the physical body of humanity is being worn out, and it's very difficult uh, to open up a Bible because the flesh is going to war against us. And so but that's when we have the victories, when we do those things, and the flesh will settle down. It's going to be uncomfortable. But uh, after a while, the flesh will settle down, and you're going to receive those amazing revelations from the Holy Spirit. This information is extremely vital, that we, that we exercise our body and defeat it, and that's how we conquer. You know, we don't feel like praying. Uh, that's when we need to pray, when we don't want to, uh, you know, seek God in our lives because of the, the hardness that, that, that is uh, influencing and afflicting. That's when we need to do it. And that's how we conquer the devil in our lives. And so God wants that uh, for us to exercise ourselves that way and build up our, our strength and have that strength in Christ. You know, the, um, the Spirit of the Holy Spirit living within us is strengthening us because we're actually involved with it through our free will and we're exercising our, our, our body, our senses. And that's what God requires us to do. Now, the church is supposed to be strong. You know, the, the gathering where I was, you know, they were mentioning that, well, the gates of hell won't prevail over the church. And, uh, well, the fact, and it was all music, basically, and, and just a little bit and some pep talking to build people up where the gates of hell is not going to prevail against the church. Well, Jesus was speaking regarding his disciples. The gates of hell will not prevail over them. He was speaking to Peter, which is, represents the church. And, and he was uh, telling them, his disciples, those instructions. The gates of hell are not going to prevail over you because you're my disciple. When we receive the Holy Spirit, we are disciples in the making. When disciples first started walking with Jesus Christ, they were just babes. They didn't understand. But as they kept walking with God, they, then they experienced his miracle. And that's when they first believed in him. And so as they walked, they became more and more and more in, in tune with the truth. It was a conditioning that they needed to go through. And they said, well, oh, now we understand you know, what you're saying. Well, that's because God, the Father, opened up their understanding. And he said that you're all clean except for one now. But I still need to wash your feet. And that feet washing, even though they received all of that, without the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, they, they weren't able to, to, uh, to follow God. We need the baptism. And Jesus went up to them and said, peace, right? Peace be with you. And he breathed into his disciples. They received the Holy Spirit. That's the holding pattern. That's where we are. That's where the church is, in the holding pattern. Now we have to wait for the Lord in Jerusalem, right? Which is a symbolic word term used for waiting for him in, his, in the city of God, in the glorification that is to transpire, that is to, to happen. And so we wait there for what? For the holy fire. And that's what we should be doing. We should be waiting in the upper room and praising God and being in solitude and separated from the world and waiting for God for that holy fire, for the fiery baptism, for the fiery tongues. And that's what God wants us to have in the face of adversity, in the face of the enemies of, of God, of his enemies. He wants the curation to conquer and glorify him. We are the curation. And he'll hold our hands and he'll give us and equip us as he so desires to give us the victory. And there is nothing sweeter in this world than to experience God and to have that victory for him and give, give him the, the glory. Because all the glory belongs to God. And that is waiting for God in, in, in meditation, in study, having our spirit focused in the realm of God, which is his throne in heaven, his patriotism, and that we're seeking him, and what thoughts and meditation are with God. Our rest is not of this place, he says, this is not your rest, come and eat of my sacrifice that I prepared for you. That's my son Jesus Christ, sitting at my right hand, ready to hear from you. God is calling you 
into his presence. Peace be with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.